specialty exam that you write when you're accepted into nursing school and usually you have a foundation class you take it can be fundamentals of nursing or um, those sort of um, introductory nursing classes and throughout this video I'll talk about some tips and tricks that can help you score over a thousand and in the last part of this video look out for some topics that you must study and uh, just a, a few little hints that will help you to be able to succeed. So the first one are called the ABCs S and D and what this stands for is airway, breathing, circulation, safety and discomfort or pain. So what this tip is, is that you can use this ABC S and D to help you to be able to figure out the answer to a question that you may see in your fundamentals HESI exam. So here's a practice question where we can use this concept. The question states, when assessing John with wrist restraints, the nurse observes that the fingers on the right hand are blue. What action should the nurse or LPN, licensed practical nurse, implement first? Loosen the right wrist restraint, apply a pulse oximeter to the right hand, compare hand color bilaterally, or palpate the right radial pulse. So I'll give you guys a few minutes to think about this question and then choose an answer and let's see what you get. So if I were going to use this um, this little tip here, the ABCs, S and D, I would see that, does this question talk about airway? No. Does it talk about breathing? No. Does it talk about circulation? Well, the question states that John, he has on wrist restraints and he observes that the fingers on the right hand are blue. So clearly, this is a circulation problem. So thus, we have to look for an answer that deals with fixing the circulation problem. So you, sh you guys should have chosen loosen the right wrist restraint. So hopefully you guys can see how using this ABC S and D helps you to be able to prioritize and recognize which answer is correct or most correct or what you should implement first. Okay, the next tip I would give is called a pie or add pie. Now this is something you must have seen in your introductory nursing class and what it stands for is assess, diagnose, planning, implementation, evaluation. And that is what you call a pie or add pie. And you can use this little trick to be able to answer your question. So let's do a practice question and see how we can implement this strategy. The question states, the nurse is car caring for Jenny who was placed in restraints due to confusion. The family removes the restraints while they are with Jenny. When the family leaves, what action should a nurse take first? A. Apply the restraints to maintain Jenny's safety. B. Reassess the client to determine the need for continuing restraints. C. Document the time the family left and continue to monitor the client. Or D. Call the healthcare provider for a new prescription. So guys, we're using API to be able to answer this question. Assess, diagnose, plan, implement, and evaluate. So based on this question, we know that Jenny was just experiencing confusion, so she was placed in restraints. However, the family came in, removed the restraints, and then left. So what will you as a nurse do? Well, you first have to assess. And which answer talks about assessing? It's B, reassess the client to determine the need for continuing restraints. In this case, um, it isn't to call the healthcare provider because you, as a nurse, you can apply restraints and you can get a prescription from the provider within 24 hours of applying those restraints. So I hope you guys are seeing and understanding how you can use these strategies to be able to help you to figure out the correct answers. The next strategy is, or, or trick is, um, recognizing that safety is important. Um, so we're going to talk about this some more. When we did the ABCs, airway, breathing, circulation, we talked about um, safety and then discomfort. So let's practice this question and see if we can recognize um, what the correct answer is. 
Carl has right-sided hemiplasia followed by a following a left CVA. His sitting balance has improved and he is now able to sit in a wheelchair. To assist a client in transferring from bed to a wheelchair, what action should a nurse take? A. Have the client put both arms around the nurse's neck for support. B. Place the wheelchair on the client's left side. C. Instruct the client to look at his feet. D. Instruct the client total slow deep breaths while transferring. So guys, if you think about this, this is this question has to do with safety. You would never put a client's arm around your neck as a nurse. That will just cause injury. Um, in this case, we learned the question states that he has right-sided hemiplegia uh, following a left CVA. Thus, his right side is not strong and cannot support him. So where would you place the wheelchair? You would place that wheelchair on the left side of the client. And that is what the correct answer is. And I hope you guys can see that this was a safety question. And you guys have to read the question carefully and see which answer makes the most sense and would, which would provide safety for the client. Okay, the next tip or trick or strategy that you need to know for the HESI fundamental exam is labs. You have to be able to know the electrolyte values. What are the normal ranges for various electrolytes? For potassium, this is a must know. It is between 3.5 to 5.0. Magnesium, 1.5 to 2. Calcium, 8 to 10. Sodium, 135 to 145. Okay, so these um, little... Um, graphics that you're seeing here, these are a must know. You have to be able to know what are the effects of hypercalcemia and hypocalcemia. Um, hypo and hyper um, potassium, hypo and hypo magnesia, and the same for phosphorus, sodium, and chloride. Um, you will definitely see questions um, asking about these things. So this is a really good chart that helps you commit it to memory. You have to know the normal values and you also have to know what happens if there's too much or too little of these electrolytes. And this is something I found on uworld.com and it's a really good resource. So I will definitely advise you guys to commit this to memory okay here is a practice question that we can do John has John who has been taking diuretics for premenstrual swelling <clears throat> reports muscle weakness which serum electrolyte value should a nurse report to the healthcare provider potassium 3.1 sodium 143 calcium 9.2 or chloride 99 so as you can see the thing here that is most out of range is the potassium. So I hope you guys chose potassium. And if you look back on that chart, you would see that um, the potassium was 3.1, which meant it was what? It was low. And low levels of potassium causes muscle weakness, fatigue, and heart arrhythmias. So I hope you guys see how important that is and how it affects the patient. Okay, so here are the important topics. This is what you guys have been waiting for. And these I have definitely seen on the HESI fundamentals exam. And I know that many students have told me about this. And these are important topics that you should definitely review. Um, you will want to know how to collect a 24-hour urine sample, um, the different types of isolation precautions, when do you wear a normal face mask versus a respirator mask, removing PPE, um, what is the correct order of removing PPE, various types of dressings and what they are used for, and the various BMI categories, and a little info about hospice care. So guys, these are things you want to know. You want to know this. Please make note of this. Okay, guys. So remember to subscribe, share, subscribe, like, and turn on that notification button. Um, thank you for watching. Menders from. And good luck. I know you guys will score above 1,000 in your HESI Fundamentals exam.